community today is about a new dimensional reduction algorithm for data science and it is called PacMap. not pacman but pacmap pairwise controlled manifold approximation projection this is a archive article a preprint pacman for pacmap for data visualization august 2021 we have Yingfan Wang as the main author, and I will show you here a short video from Professor Cynthia Rudar from Duke University. You can find the preprint on this link, and I will leave you also the link to the YouTube presentation of PEC Map here from Professor Rudar in the description of this video. So here we go. This is the beauty is that you can describe this this PEC Map algorithm in one page and here is it this is directly out from the video so all credits go to professor Radar just to have a main idea how the loss function is constructed they say more or less hey let's have three terms we have the weights and a loss function for the neighbors for the close by neighbors plus a term for the weights and the loss function from the mid near pairs also attractive but just a little bit attractive a mild attractive force and then they have the empirical approach to have a weight and a loss function for further away points and if you have an original input data space and a high dimensional space uh, further away points you also want that in the low dimensional embedding space you have them further away those points and now what they say here is hey our loss function let's define it in a simple way and then what we do is we have iterations and we have a three stage if you want iteration going on now in stage one we have iteration one to iteration 100 we said then the, the first weight, the weight of the close by neighbors is a medium force. We set it to two. And then the media the, in the middle, the mid near pairs neighbors, they go from huge to small within the one to 100 iteration. So they have a numerical, they start with a numerical value of 1000 and they go down to three. So here, this is the dominant factor. And for the forward parts, the weight is set to a medium value here, numerical one. Now in the second stage, so from 100 to 200 iteration, they say, okay, our nearest neighbor is large three. The mid near pairs is also three. And the far away point is one. And in the last stage, they go now, if you want, for the, for the local structure of our graphs, they set the, the weight of the close by neighbors to one. They set the weight of the mid near pairs to zero and the far away is, is one. So you see, this is a summary how they optimize that, how they define the loss function that then they optimize. This is it. I think a very clear, a very intuitive, and according to her, a very fast, computational fast calculation. So let's have a look at this. In the archive preprint here, archive, they have also this very informative presentation, this slide where they say, if iteration uh, zero to iteration 450. And the first stage, they just start out of pure chaos and then they go on, go on, go on. And then stage two, as I showed you here, stage two, 100 to 200, they, they tune this parameter. And as you can see here on our MNIST data set, our digits from zero to nine. And if we have those pictures, uh, 28 pixel times 28 pixels in black and white, you see how the separation of those 10 classes of those uh, digits from zero to nine evolve. And then in stage three, more or less, they go really for the fine, for the local uh, density distribution, which is a very nice visual iterative uh, presentation, how the algorithm performs from pure chaos after 450 iteration, already to a very nice separation of our 10 classes. So, and what we are gonna do now is, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hold on, clear all outputs. 
So what we are gonna do now is we install PacMap. It's a Python library, so we're working here on a Jupyter collab. So we just say install it, then we have to import PacMap, NumPy, Matplotlib, and then there's a very special uh, nearest neighbor algorithm, Annoy. I don't know if you know it, you can use any other uh, algorithms for this. I already downloaded my content files. You say yes, yes, yes. You just load up your MNIST images and your MNIST labels. And if you want to check the labels, we have all the different from zero to nine, and the length should be at about 70,000 examples, 70,000 pictures if it's the original MNIST dataset. And now they say here, they give a beautiful, they have a GitHub repository. I'll leave you a link in the description. And I taken this example directly from their GitHub. So please go there, experience for yourself. They say, hey, the command is pacmap, pacmap. The number of components, of course, we want to have an embedding space of two dimensional. We have a plane. The number of neighbors is none. And they specify setting the number of neighbors to none leads to an automatic parameter selection. And this is nice. They do all this stuff for us. And then we just have to train the system. So this is what we're going to do. And the next step will be, oh, I'm running here on a runtime and I have, oh, only GPU, oh, only CPU, no GPU. So let's see how long it takes. And then they visualize the embeddings. So we have a look, you remember this famous uh, prints from MNIST how good it is if we go for the basic version of pack map where the automatic parameter selection is done by the python library we downloaded and activated so of course while this is syncing we go and we refer that there's an advanced version if you want to really tune a little bit your parameters this would be the next step let's have a peek preview there is a Python library called Approximate the Nearest Neighbors. It's a C++ library. It's very fast. They do the nearest neighbor search. It's almost as fast as the fastest libraries. Okay, we believe this. You have as a metric Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, cosine distance, the Hamming distance, remember, for, for strings, or the dot, the inner product distance. We are interested in operating in vector spaces. Uh, it works better if you do not have too many dimensions or so less than 100 dimension, but it seems to perform even surprising well up to 1000 dimension. If you have a higher dimensional vector space, use some other algorithms like the one I showed you in my parametric UMAP video. So, and here we go. Is it's done now? It's still calculating here. Yes, I should have switched to GPU, but never mind. Never mind. Um, it create, now we do a nearest neighbor per algorithm. We have here explicitly, I set the number of neighbors. Maybe I just set it to 10, that it doesn't take too much time. It uh, does a type costing for the number acceleration. You have now to sample the neighbor pairs. Yes, beautiful. And then again, you say PacMac, PacMac, you have your API, you have your embedding projection in two dimension. The number of neighbors is defined with 10. Number of neighbors is 10, yes. And you train the system. And also we start with this. This cell is already running, beautiful. Uh, here we go. Oops, that's a little bit. Okay, let's, let's, let's alter this a little bit. Let's put it to 12. Maybe we have a better visualization. Come on. Yes, here we go. So here we have our 10 classes from our MNIST dataset, where we have pictures of handwritten you know, digits from zero to nine in black and white, 28 pixel times 28 pixel. And you can see one, two, three, one, two, three, four, 10 classes clearly separated, easily done. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I think there are some outliers a little bit here present here and maybe if you look here, there's also a little bit of uh, not absolutely 100% separation, but well, of course, it was the basic embedding. So I have to tell you, this is really nice. It goes fast, just one or two minutes, and you have the basic MNIST embedding done for you. 
Now, next step, as I told you, is to go with the advanced version. Let's start this and I will be back with you when the advanced training has finished and I can show you the visualization in a two-dimensional plane. And after two, three minutes, we are back having done the advanced calculation where we use the Annoy index, the Python library, as a nearest neighbor pair creation. And if you visualize now the advanced embedding, I would say it looks really similar for me to me like the other one. We have our three, three, and then four. So we have clearly separated our 10 classes. Maybe you can say there are the, the blue here, the blue class. Oh, this should be, I suppose, nine. There are maybe some yeah outlines also in the yellow. Yellow, well, wait, wait. I have done this yeah, here. Um, here, the, 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 the color mapping was spectral, but of course, if we have 10 discrete classes, I take the table of 10 class uh, color mapping. And I want to show you if we have this in a tab 10 visualization. Yes, this looks much nicer because now we have our classes here and we can say, oh, there are two blue. There's a dark, so the darker blue is zero and the lighter blue is nine. Okay, I see. Yeah, there are, well, yeah, not a lot of outliers, but a little bit, yeah, of course, but yeah, it looks very nice. So. You can use either the basic version, I think it works really well for this task, or you go for the little bit more advanced version. Remember, you can use any nearest neighbor pair algorithm that you like to your whatever specific problem. But also the basic version gives real nice results. If, if you are like me, you are pixel peeping, and you say, hey, I want to see all the outliers, just increase the size of the marker. And then it becomes a more homogeneous color field. And you will see here, for example, almost everything is yellow, just a little bit of blue dots here. And here's everything more or less green, just a little bit of red dots here in this array here. So not 100% perfect, but given that it is such a, a beautiful and, and also, I think, simple to explain algorithm. It does a pretty well job. I did not experience this in any other more complex topics. I have no personal recommendation on this because I just uh, found the video by Professor Rodin and I just had a look at it and I wanted to show you and I wanted to, to experience myself how it, how it looks how fast it runs on a free collab notebook. And I must say, I'm impressed with this particular topic. If you have higher dimensional spaces and you increase the complexity, I have no personal um, evidence how good it is compared to UMAP or other dimensionality reduction algorithms. Please check for your specific task. I only can tell you I really like parametric view map for my high dimensional spaces. Uh, when I do sentence embedding, I work here with the transformer networks and I have different um, neural networks that be as an encoder and a decoder for our parametric view map algorithm. But if this algorithm is for you, I can definitely tell you it's fast even running on a CPU beautifully, and you get really a very nice separation of the 10 classes here. This was it, a short introduction to PacMap, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I see you in the next one.